Hey everyone, so this week we are doing five things that art therapy can help with and today's topic is identity issues. So the term identity crisis first came from developmental psychologist and psychoanalyst Eric Erickson. He introduced the ideas of adolescent identity crisis as well as midlife crises, which we've all heard of, believing that personality is developed by resolving crisis in life. If you're experiencing an identity crisis, this may be questioning your, se your sense of self or identity. This can often occur due to big changes of stressor or stressors in your life or due to factors such as age or advancement from a certain stage, for example, like school, work, or childhood. So symptoms of an, anxi of an identity crisis, um, it's not exactly a diagnosable condition, so there aren't typical symptoms as like with a cold or flu, but instead here are signs that you may be experiencing an identity crisis. Um, so first, you're questioning who you are overall or with regards to a certain aspect of your life, such as relationships, age, or career. Uh, second, you're experiencing great personal conflict due to the questioning of who you are or your role in society. Uh, three big changes have recently occurred that have affected your sense of self. So for example, um, a divorce would, would be in that category. Uh, four, you're questioning things such as your values, spirituality, beliefs, interests, or career path that have a major impact on how you see yourself. So maybe not being happy with where you are in your life, maybe it is career-based and you're like, I should be way ahead, why is that guy advancing and I'm not, things like that. And lastly, you're searching for more meaning, reason, or passion in your life. So it's completely normal to question who you are, especially since we change throughout our lives. However, when it begins to affect your daily thinking or functioning, you may be having a crisis of identity. So some of the causes that we discussed, although often thought of as happening at certain ages, for instance, in teens or during midlife crisis, an identity crisis can happen to anyone of any age at any point in one's life. Oftentimes, identity crisis or other mental health issues can arise due to major life stressors. These stressors don't have to be inherently uh, bad, but they can still cause a lot of stress. Stressors can include um, getting married, getting divorced or separated, moving, um, experience a traumatic event, losing a loved one, losing or getting a job, uh, or new health issues that may arise. These and other stressors can certainly have an impact on your daily life and how you see yourself. One recent study found that factors such as a social, social support, stress levels, and health issues can all influence how developmental, how development of an often called midlife crisis. So they're saying that all of these things, these factors can contribute to that crisis. Um, so treatment for an identity crisis, you have to look inward and explore. Take some time to time out to really look within yourself and ask yourself some questions about what you like, what you don't like. Search for joy and other ways to cope. What makes you happy? What gives your life a sense of purpose and joy? Uh, you don't necessarily have to have the perfect job, but if you aren't doing anything fulfilling in your life, then this might be why you feel like you're in a crisis. So say you're in a job that pays really well, but it's just not your passion. This is where we would encourage you, as any therapist would, to find your passion, add it into it so there's a balance and you're not feeling so weighted down by that. Uh, it's important to find support. Having a good social support can help influence uh, how well you cope with big changes, stressor, stressors, or questions of identity. There are so many places that you can find uh, support, and especially online, there are so many Facebook groups that are so great and powerful, but also you can find them in your community and through art therapy groups but you need to ignore internal and external judgment. Other people's expectations as well as your own can have a big effect on how we're feeling, but don't let society standards dictate who you are and what you should like. So don't let them say, hey, you're married, you've got a great family, you've got this, 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 this is what they're seeing from the outside, but they don't know you, they don't know what you are experiencing. So just because you are of a certain age, gender, or cultural group, doesn't mean that you need to follow along if you no longer believe in what you're following. 
So it is advised, seek outside help. And part of that outside help would be counseling or art therapy. If the stress ever gets to be too much, consider seeking that outside help. This can come from a trustworthy friend or a family member or talk to a mental health professional and help you resolve what's going on. Art therapy can be a great tool for that. We can find coping mechanisms and things that you can turn to that will really dig deeper and find out why you're in this crisis in the first place. So stay tuned. I have an exercise for you that you can work on at home. So today's activity is mask making. So there's many ways to approach this and I will walk you through a very simple version. So mask making is a popular art therapy intervention because it touches on many of Carl Jung's concepts, including persona and shadow. Mask can bring to consciousness how we both see ourselves or what we fantasize we would like to be like. Because a mask has an outside and an inside, I often ask my clients to consider portraying how others see See you on the outside of the mask and then how you really feel inside of the mask. For individuals with addictions or a history of physical or sexual abuse, working with a therapist to explore persona and shadow in this way is a profound, revealing, and often personally liberating experience. So in this activity, you have two options. You can take the simpler route, which would be just simply going and Googling a face mask and printing this out online. I do advise printing two copies and gluing them together so you have a front and back. The alternative would be using an actual mask. Maybe you have a Halloween mask left around or just decide to go to um, a supply or com um, costume store and buy one yourself. They're not expensive, but plastic would work best. I do advise also that if you are using a plastic mask, you probably would be um, apt to use paint. Uh, marker could smear. So just be careful of the medium that you choose. Uh, you could also do collage if that would work, but that requires a lot of gluing. Mod Podge would come in great here. So part one of this project is doing one side of what people see. So when they look at you, what do you think that they see? So my process was starting with colors. I used colored pencil and I shaded in the mask with vibrant and just pretty colors. And that's kind of what I depict myself as um, when I'm out in public and people are meeting me. Um, and then just some keywords that I have associated with myself um, more in recent years. But this is how I think people view me. Part two would be the opposite side of the mask. So as I had suggested, just glue the two pieces of paper together and then you can simply flip it over and work on the opposite side. So this side of the mask would depict what you see. Who are you? This is more um, really reaching into your own emotion and finding out, you know, what makes you tick. Maybe it's just current. Maybe this is how you're feeling in the moment. For me, I also decided to shade in the back, but this time I did half. I did half the mask as gray because that would be those conflicted feelings and emotions when I'm not having such a great day. Um, and the words say that uh, sometimes sad, tired, and anxious. So that would be that gray area that not so perfect and rainbow color, which is the other side of the mask. So that is being hopeful and positive and looking towards this colorful future that I feel that I have. So this is a great activity to do with children as well. And really, really fun if you do have an actual mask. So think about that when Halloween rolls around and you have those plastic masks that you don't know what to do with. So you can just take some paint and cover it over. Spray paint does work best as, you know, covering anything that has a permanent design on it and then going back and having them decorate it. Uh, you can use stickers and collage. These work great. But I do love this activity with clients. It's pretty simple, but it's also really telling. I hope you enjoyed this activity.